So you remember that uh, Toby Jones came on the show a couple of weeks ago because he was talking about... What was he coming on to talk about? Toby Jones? Yes. Which film was he talking about? It was only a couple of weeks ago. I, I know it was, Simon. So which film was he talking about? It was that uh, the strange one in his in his flat. Thank you. It was Kaleidoscope. That's right. Thank you very much. And I'm also sorry. he was talking about The Snowman, although yeah. we didn't really concentrate yes. on that too. No dad's better, Snow Dad's better than No Dad. That's the one. And also he talked briefly about having worked uh, with uh, Michael Haneke and Happy End, which is coming out now. So this is... Um, the latest by Hanukkah, with a supporting role, but, you know, important role by by, by Toby Jones. Um, Isabel Huppert is Anne Laurent, who is the owner of a construction firm. Her father, Georges, uh, played by Jean-Louis Tritignon, is in what appears to be the early stages of dementia. His son, her son, Pierre, also appears to be in the mid-stages of uh, an alcohol-related problem, a drinking problem. She has a brother, Thomas, who has now a new partner, having uh, abandoned his wife, the mother of teenager Eve, uh, and the wife that he's the person who he's abandoned is in hospital. So essentially, what you have is that thing about the, the Michael Haneke family, you know, the, the the middle class, the bourgeois family, all of whose relationships seem to be strangely poisoned by mistrust by deception, by uh, some, you know, some underlying untruth. And tangentially to this, you have Toby Jones, who is playing the character of the, uh, the, the, the lover of Isabelle Huppert. Although for most of the movie, we see him at a distance. He is somebody, although, you know, it's a, he, although they are connected, we see them connected from a distance. Now, the strange thing about the film is this. As with all of Michael Haneke's work, it's intriguing and disturbing and compelling. Somebody said to me, um, oh, I haven't seen Happy End. And I said, but you kind of have. Because weirdly enough, of all of Haneke's films, it's the one which plays most like a collection of Haneke tropes. So, for example, there's a bit at the beginning with uh, mobile phone video footage, which took me back very much to the days of Benny's video, which I int remember introducing that on Film 4 Extreme, you know, yonks and yonks ago. It's like an early Hanukkah film. It's a very, very disturbing Hanukkah film, but an early Hanukkah acting. There are sequences in it in which a camera just stands and observes something happening, and you can't quite tell what it is that you're meant to be looking at. That reminded me very much of uh, Hidden. There is a connection to Amour, um, in fact, there is a story which connects this directly back to a more, although it seems to be a sort of alternative world connection to a more like a sequel that's happened by turning left rather than going straight ahead. So there are all these kind of recurrent themes in it that tie it back to Hanukkah's back catalogue. And the peculiar thing is that although it in itself is a, you know, a well-made and unsettling piece of work, it did feel like it was referring back to films in which Hanukkah had trodden this ground before and had done it in a way that was more groundbreaking. I remember the first time I saw Amour, for example, being completely sideswiped by it, not least because it seemed to be a, you know, a, a left turn for Hanukkah in his career. I think he's a really interesting filmmaker, and it may be that I have to watch Happy End again. I know some critics have absolutely raved about it, um, from my own point of view, I felt, and this sounds like a weird thing to say, it felt like an incidental Hanukkah work. It felt like the, and the next instalment in a, in, you know, in something which was unfolding and weirdly looking back over a career, which has involved so many moments that are so startling. I mean, I remember seeing Funny Games in Cannes whenever it was that that first played, and coming as close as I've ever come to w walking out of a film. Well, I didn't walk out of it, but I really wanted to because the film kept saying, why aren't you walking out? Why aren't you walking out? Why aren't you walking out? I got really angry thinking. And uh, all the way through his career, Haneke has had that ability to provoke and to needle and to unsettle and to get under the skin of the audience. And in this case, I I didn't feel that that sense. I felt it was solid but unremarkable.